This is the third video in our off-grid solar installation series where we go step by step through the whole process of designing and procuring and installing a whole new solar system. Uh, last one was on batteries, this one is on the solar panels. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we designed this, why we designed it the way we did, and uh, then we're going to connect them up and take you along show you how that works. Okay, so when you're designing your solar panels or specking out your solar panel array, you want to design it to the battery bank you've already uh, designed. That is, based on the sun hours available in your area, the size of the battery bank, uh, the number, uh, how, off, how quickly you want it to recharge in a day. So I wanted to be able to charge our battery bank within two hours uh, in the morning to keep, keep it topped off. Um, we have four to five sun hours a day and uh, so the array size that we designed is a 5200 watt uh, array and what I've done is designed this for expansion. Uh, this will charge our batteries in two to three hours a, a, on a sunny day and our battery bank will let us run three and a half to four days uh, without any recharge. So the way this is designed, there are 18 total panels. Each one is 290 watt from Solar World. Uh, they have about a 17 and a half percent efficiency rating. Each one puts out 34, 35 volts, about seven and a half to eight amps. So <clears throat> we've strung them together in strings of three wired in series and when you wire in series you increase the voltage and your amps stay the same so we've got 35 35 35 volts and then say about 8 amps so each one of these strings is going to produce about 100 volts by the time it gets up the hill at that 8, eight amps and we have those paralleled together with two other strings so there are nine panels in an array and we have two arrays so each one of these arrays will produce 2,500 watts peak sun. <clears throat> and again, I designed it for expansion, and that's why I split it into two arrays with two different combiner boxes. Each of these arrays will go to its own charge controller, so we'll have two charge controllers, each operating at about 60% capacity. That will allow me to add two more strings to each array, adding a total of 12 more solar panels plug and play and then I can add a battery to the end if I want to of the string that we've already designed for our battery bank so it's all designed to uh, we could probably go up to eight eight thousand watt hours uh, and that's way more than we need so I'll take you around and show you how this is all hooked up hmm who did that Now I spent about a week building these racks, uh, taking a nine foot pallet, tearing it down and reassembling it to a rack that fit these perfectly. And then I decided after the third one that that was just kind of a waste of time. And then I just switched to pallets. This is all just a temporary install while we're here at the camp until we move to the house. And then I'll set these up on a permanent ground mount or maybe a top of pole mount. I don't know yet, but we just needed to get it up and working. And these racks work great for now. So I've got all, all of the uh, wiring done. I just haven't connected each of these panels together uh, and uh, turned them on yet. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to connect these three panels together in, in series and then we're going to run a voltmeter on them and test them. Now anytime you're doing this uh, in the daytime, cover your panels because they are under load. You plug them in, you're working with high voltage. So cover your panels with a tarp and it'll drop your current so you're not working with dangerous stuff. Okay, I've made my um, cables from the combiner box to each string and they're just sitting here. I'm going to plug those in now. So I've got my PV1 string 2 going to PV1 string 2. And then the, the uh, positive of this first panel goes to the negative of the second panel. Positive of the second panel 
goes to the negative of the third panel. And then the positive of this one goes back through to the uh, combiner box using the cable that I made. So now this string is live. Now we'll go uh, put a voltmeter on it and see what it looks like. All right, here we are in the back of the array. Here's the first combiner box for this uh, uh, array of nine panels. I use a little clippy thing to hold the dead front to the lid so I can work on it. This is it all wired up. We've just connected the second string, which is here. So we got one, two, three strings. Positives coming off the panels, negatives coming off the panels to a common negative bus bar, and then our big four gauge cable, each the positive and the negative going up to the uh, inverter. And then all of this is ground wire. Each one of these panels is grounded to the other and they're all bonded together. They all come into this common ground bus and then they go down to a ground stake uh, to ground the whole system. And then also again, each of these uh, combiners has an SPD, a surge protection device, to clamp the voltage in case there's any weird lightning issues. Okay, we've used the tarp to connect the panels. Now we can pull the tarp off. And now we'll test our voltage. All right, let's test these strings. First string is already connected. It's pushing uh, 85.6 volts, which is a little low. I think it's still in the shade a little bit. Second string, which is the one we just hooked up, is almost 110 volts, so that's good. Third string is not hooked up yet, so it still has it still has voltage though. So we're gonna hook up uh, this third string, and then we're gonna hook up all the rest of them, flip all these breakers on, and we should have power up to the house. When you're looking for panels to build your array and you're looking at all the different brands and models and wattages and all of that, they, each of the manufacturers publish the specs of it. Uh, and there's a thing called standard test conditions, which gives you the voltage, uh, the voltage open circuit and all the things you need to know. Um, usually go by 80% of that to get a kind of a real world idea of what your panel is going to be able to produce. These actually produce exactly what they say they will produce. So I can, uh, say solar world panels are pretty good. Uh, I wrote down a few things I'm going to talk about here uh, with respect to how this matches up to our charge controllers and our battery bank. Um, you, like I said, you want to size your array to be able to charge the battery bank you've designed in as short a period of time as possible, ideally a couple hours in the morning. Our charge controllers are going to be Midnight Solar Classic 150s. They're tried and true for 20 some years. They're built like trucks. They'll take 96 amps each. Um, the charging current for each of the batteries we've chosen is 34 amps. So since those are going to be hooked in parallel, uh, we have six of them. That's 34 times six is 204 amps of charging current that can go into them. Uh, and so with two Classic 150s rated at 96 amps each, if they were maxed out, that's that's about ideal for, for that configuration so that you're using the charge controller, uh, its total capacity. We are only gonna be using, like I said, 60% of the charge controller right now. Later on when we add panels, we'll be able to add 12 more panels. So that's the solar panels. Uh, pretty, pretty simple to uh, hook up once you figure out the whole series parallel thing. So a lot of people always ask us where we get this stuff. Uh, uh, we got all of our components for this system uh, from altestore.com. Alt They're a great distributor. Their tech people were great to work with, and they helped us, uh, you know, validate the design that we had come up with. And uh, they've got a good library of uh, tech information and things that you can use to learn if you're just getting into this DIY stuff. They got a YouTube channel that uh, has a lot of information about all the different things. So I do recommend altestore.com. And uh, that's the panel array that we put together. And so next we're gonna do the combiner box and go over how to put that together from pulling it out of the box and then hooking it all up. So hope to see you then, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.